I gotta speak from the heart here. Silver the Hedgehog is one of my favorite Sonic characters. He's a heavily underrated character, and I love this guy. The internet hasn't been kind to him since a lot of people got a bad first impression, which I don't blame them for. We first encounter him in Sonic 06 as a psychic dude who wants Sonic's blood. Keep in mind that this is from Sonic's perspective. We initially don't know what his deal is. So you engage in the worst boss fight ever if you instantly charge towards him. I know I'm getting sidetracked, but I want to talk about this. This battle is infamously known for Silver catching and flinging you. Try this strategy instead. Evade Silver and wait for him to say, How about this? Then slide through him while he's holding objects and then keep running. You can beat him without getting caught once. This boss battle is the main reason why a lot of people hate Silver. I brought this up when I talked about Big the Cat. Some characters are despised purely for gameplay related reasons, as if their personality is an afterthought. So as far as we know, Silver is some crazy thug. And this is where he's been cemented as one of the worst received Sonic characters. No need to think further. Sorry. In this show, we don't stop at first impressions. We dig deeper. Silver's campaign fills in the blanks, and I really like his story. Right off the bat, we know who he is and what he's after. He's a teenager who lives in a hellish world of despair, frequently under attack by the immortal fire behemoth, Iblis. He fights alongside Blaze the Cat, who's clearly his best friend, and he wants nothing more than to stop Iblis permanently and escape this nightmare. The villainous doppelganger Mephilus the Dark seemingly volunteers to help Silver through lying about who is responsible for Iblis, so he labels Sonic as the Iblis Trigger, and Silver believes him. People give Silver flack for buying what Mephilus said, but in Silver's defense, he's desperate to save his world. Additionally, he's naive. Like I said in my last video, the characters in this franchise are identifiable. Sonic is the jaunty teen, Shadow is the quiet kid who has a soft spot for others, and Silver is the openly expressive, well-meaning adolescent. Like Knuckles, he started out inexperienced, so of course he trusts Mephilus. In his mind, Sonic's the bad guy. Wipe him out, and the future's saved. Upon stepping into the past, he's blown away by how tranquil and pleasant the world is. This is what he wants for the future. During a failed attempt to get Sonic, he bumps into the bubbly Amy Rose, who's quick to help him find who he's looking for, not knowing of his mission. I like the cutscene in Dusty Desert where Silver acknowledges how pretty the whole place is, much to Amy's surprise, and Silver promises he'll help her find Sonic, not knowing that Sonic and the Iblis Trigger are the same person. This guy's on a mission to save the world, and he's so innocent he makes time to help a stranger locate her friend. Afterwards, he finds Sonic and goes in for the kill, but Amy defends him, and Silver can't bring himself to hurt her. Amy then scolds Silver for targeting Sonic. We've seen Amy take part in redeeming Gamma and Shadow, but for Silver, he takes time to think about what the right thing to do is. To kill someone to save the world. Is that really the right thing to do? People will say that this dialogue is a bit much for a Sonic game, but to be fair, Sonic is no stranger to mature storytelling. This begins a turning point in Silver's character arc. Instead of heading towards Sonic again right away, he sets out to investigate what's going on, so he storms Eggman's base in White Acropolis, where he finds the Blue Chaos Emerald, which Blaze describes as a lucky charm that can transform your thoughts into power. That last line intrigues Silver. The next time he sees Mephilus, he shows his doubts and asks for the complete truth. Mephilus resorts to tempting him with his desire for a peaceful home and urges him to get to Radical Train before time runs out. Silver reluctantly goes. We can see that he's not proud of what he has to do. After his final attempt on eliminating Sonic, Shadow swoops in and later convinces Silver to discover the origin of Iblis and Mephilus, 10 years ago, which Silver agrees to after thinking about it briefly. It's here where Silver witnesses Iblis being transferred into the young Princess Elise. Now he knows everything. Before returning to the previous point in time, we come to the most emotional moment in the game. It's a lucky charm.
everything that defines Silver is here. He hands the emerald to the sleeping Elise who just lost her father and displays some mourning and respect for her. Did I mention I love this guy? Next up, he helps Sonic rescue Elise after Eggman threatened to destroy Soleana. Before reaching Kingdom Valley, you need to do the test of memory, where a priest will ask Silver whether he considers Sonic an ally or an enemy. Earlier, Silver wanted Sonic dead, but now he'll happily cooperate with them. He's learned and grown so much since then. I like how Sonic is so quick to let Silver tag along. He's had rivals turn over a new leaf before, so why not Silver? The finale of his campaign pits him against Iblis with a new method on stopping him. He tries using the Chaos Emeralds to seal Iblis in himself. He's willing to live with Iblis inside his body for the rest of his life if that's what it takes, but the transfer doesn't work. Blaze steps in to sacrifice herself, pleading with Silver to bring her and Iblis to another dimension through Chaos Control, but he can't lose his friend. The ending is bittersweet, as the world is saved, but Blaze dies in the process, leaving Silver on his own. You can't tell me you don't feel bad for him. The last story is where he's at his most triumphant. Mephilus has killed Sonic and fused with Iblis, becoming the space-time destroying Solaris. Everyone has lost hope, except Silver. The kid who has lived in anguish his entire life vows to never give up, and he motivates everyone else to revive Sonic and fight Solaris. This bit where Silver rekindles Elise's confidence always gets to me. You were the vessel that was used to seal Iblis. You should be able to use the gem's power to rescue Sonic's soul. I'll do it. I love how Shadow was written in this game, but let's face it, Silver's the hero of the story. At first, he was an oblivious kid with the right intentions, but by the end, he shows his true colors as eternally optimistic and inspiring. And that's why he's one of my favorite Sonic characters. Yeah, the plot's been retconned, but so what? We experience what kind of person Silver is, and I want to see more of him. Thankfully, he's made plenty of reappearances in later installments. He served a major role in both Sonic Rivals games, but after that, he doesn't do much. He talks a bit in colors on the DS and cheered for Sonic in Generations. The closest recent installment where he was relevant was Forces, but he was pointless to the narrative. Although his scuffle with Infinite was nice. Does anyone but you believe your lies? I know about Team Sonic Racing, but that game's story is so meh. I so want Silver to be playable in a new full 3D game, preferably with controls similar to Sonic and Shadow in the Adventure titles, with a few tweaks. He could jump higher, or his homing attack could have a longer reach, something. I don't care how frustrating his boss fight can be, or how the phrase, it's no use, has practically become Sonic 06's catchphrase, I love Silver. And he deserves better recognition. He's the most gallant Sonic character, and I'll proudly defend him any day. You're a good guy, Silver.